comply with it? Yes. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for this exclusive Bible study for the College of Horticulture students. And I welcome you, greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we start tonight's uh, Bible study, first let me read a passage from Peter, the first general epistle of uh, Peter. And this is chapter one, Peter chapter one. I'm going to read a rather long passage. Peter chapter chapter one, uh, first Peter chapter one, verse 15 on to, till verse 25. Uh, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judged according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, for who Verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that ye have faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass withered, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. May God bless the reading of the holy words. Shall we look to God in prayer? Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful night that you've given us. After about a few days of not seeing each other after the camp, Lord, you have guided us in this fashion. And you've given us this great opportunity to learn to uh, your words together and be digging deeper and to be uh, uh, changed, uh, altered to be transformed, to be touched by your word once again. Lord, we come before your presence. Bless this moment and whoever is uh, coming here, Lord, we ask that you uh, free us of all the trouble and anxious thoughts and that your word will strengthen and live in and empower us once again as we dig deeper. Thank you for the brethren, dear brothers and sisters of Portico College for their commitment and may, Lord, you continue to bless them through this uh, uh, very humble means of engaging your word because your word is forever and you are a forever. We thank you for being a living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, this is the first time that we have come together uh, after the camp and we are so excited my wife and I kept talking about the camp and people come and in the church also people ask us what happened at that camp and we're so grateful and we're so honored to give nice reports and we really want to thank each one of you. And uh, tonight we will study a very engaging uh, word um, and then uh, we will have interaction. And to lead us with a Bible study tonight, we have a very special guest who is none other than my uh, my wife. The, the Lord gave me my wife and, and a couple of years ago we met and here she is now. We're so grateful to be ministering together. All right. So we'll give the time to her. And then after she is done everything, I think I'll take over. Okay. So let's give time to Sister Tlan Pui. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Sister Rini and Brother Vermin, Lime, yes, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Stick around. All right. Yes. Sister Pui. Yes.
Hello, am I audible? Yes. yes, sister. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for turning up. It's so encouraging to see that uh, we are 16 in number now. Wow, so wonderful. So I hope you had a very wonderful day. Today was a surprise gift from the government, right? You had a holiday too, right? So I hope you enjoyed your holiday. Tomorrow also, three days in a row, you don't have to go to, go to college. So hopefully uh, you utilize your time. And tonight uh, will not take so long. We are going to learn from a very, very familiar passage, a passage uh, that most of you knew uh, when you were uh, very young. Okay, so we are going to study from Psalms 23. If you can grab your Bible, I think most of you don't need to grab your Bible also. Is there anyone who can recite Psalms 23? Let me know. Would you like to try without looking at uh, your Bible? Can you recite at least one, two <laughs> verse? Sister, I've already opened my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Cheating, huh? Okay. Yes. So, uh, yeah. If you're, I hope you're ready with your uh, pen and paper also. Okay, because we are going to do some exercise and we'll all share also, okay? So I hope you're, please grab your uh, pen and diary or some notebook or anything, okay? Um, let me share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, sister. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, as I've said, it's a very familiar passage. Can um, can one of our sister read? As she reads, uh, we'll all concentrate, okay? Sister Zorini, uh, can you hear? Oh, yes, sister. Oh, yes, 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 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in, in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He lead me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with, with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much. So, you know, when I read this passage, I, I used to imagine a very green, luscious place with uh, still waters, you know, sparkling waters there and uh, like oasis, right? Like our team. So that's how I used to imagine. So uh, I used to say that Psalms 23 is my favorite because uh, there is so many assurance and promises that uh, you, you can read and it's for all occasions. So uh, this is one of my favorite, uh, uh, you know, chapters uh, in the past in the Bible, just for <laughs> yeah sharing sake. So, uh, but then this psalm is written by uh, King David. Okay, I hope you're all familiar with David, right? So one thing in Bible study we need to know is like who write it. So from the writer himself, uh, we will be able to gather so many things. Okay, uh, Psalm 23 is written by uh, David. David, as we know, was a shepherd, right? When he was very young, he used to tend his father's sheep. And uh, while tending his father's sheep, he would 
uh, encounter you know dangerous situations where he had to face uh, lions and you know uh, with wolves and all then he was very brave and he would chase them away and he would even kill lions that's what we have learned and uh, so from you know uh, if if we ask Gordon Ramsay right to write a cookbook we will paka know that yes that's going to be a good book right because he is a world known chef we know that he is so uh, good in cooking uh, in all the gourmet stuffs and also just like that we can be so assured of Sabs to three because the writer is King David who was a shepherd okay so he knows exactly what he's saying so uh try to uh, like read it when you read again in uh, according to how the author is writing try to imagine what he's imagining okay so but then uh the picture that i'm using is not the right picture this is maybe i don't know from nagaland or i don't know very beautiful place yeah maybe zuku valley or what i don't know so let's see uh this is the actual scenario when we talk about uh david while he was writing okay in the valleys uh, in israel it's very dry and arid okay and uh, you can see that uh, th there is a shepherd he's tending his flocks uh, where is the green things uh, where is it right not so green uh, but oh, a very uh, wonderful thing about this terrain is that uh, you know uh, in between those rocks there would be shrubs and uh, grasses and all which the, is very nourishing for the 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 shepherd for the flocks. Okay, so the shepherd would drive them miles and miles to get water. Would drive them miles and miles to get those uh, shrubs and uh, grasses from in between the the rocks. So uh, a shepherd really knows, uh, really need to know uh, about the terrain where the, the sheep will be able to climb. Okay, and and you can see the terrain. Sometimes there is a, a, a deep gorges. Uh, it's not a very well, uh, you know, maintained road. So I hope you can uh, visualize, keep on visualizing this picture when we uh, go ahead. Okay, and what during the camp, brother uh, Juna taught us about Bible study. There were three steps. Did anyone remember three steps in doing Bible study? Can anyone share? You can turn back to your uh, oh, diaries. Yeah. Yes, for the demo. Interpretation, observation, interpretation, interpretation and application. Wow, great. Application. Yes, you're right. Full mark. So is there any keeping of points here? <laughs> Matthew group or what, Brother Demo? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, we've got three points. Okay, three uh, in inductive style. Uh, first is our observation. Observation means well, we, we are just going to see like any other person would see. Yeah, like we are going to read through the passage like any other book. So uh, let's just see what the writer is writing okay you don't need to go uh, so theological in this first is who are the people involved okay can i hope you can all see is there any connection or relationship among them is there anywhere is there any uh, reference of places is there any important uh, action words verbs uh, when is there any reference of time what is the central idea what's the theme is there any contrasting idea? So uh, I, will, I, will, I will give you like uh, maybe three, four minutes. Please go through your Psalms 23 again, looking at these questions. Try to answer and write down in your diaries, okay? Then we will uh, share again. Who are the people involved? What is their connection? Is there any place mentioned? What are the verbs? Any time mentioned? What is the central idea? And is there any contrasting idea?
Are we done? Can we go to the, the first question? Who are the people involved? Is there any person mentioned over here? Please feel free to share, okay? You can, uh, uh, if you're not so comfortable speaking, you can use the chat uh, the room. You can just type your answers. Who are the people? Is there anyone here? Mm. In the first verse itself, we see the word Lord and the, the shepherd also. And then um, I think the I is uh, referring to David. Yes, great. Thank and you so much, sister. Wonderful answer. In the verse five, we see he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So I think enemies can also be. Yes, exactly. Correct. Absolutely correct, sister. So wonderful. So let's go to the second one. Is there any re reference of place? Did we see any place mentioned here? Yes, like we saw in the picture that you uh, shown us in the first slide. Um, yes. We saw yes. green pastures and then uh, the seal water. Which Jesus, uh, which uh, God leads David according to his uh, this passage. Hmm. Great, brother. Thank you so much. Is there any more? Darkest Valley, House oh. of the Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, sister. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, you've got it all correct. So um, any verb, any action word over here? Um, in the second, in the second verse, it says, he makes me lie down. The word lie is also action perfect. Yes. yes. Uh, it's a very wonderful action, right? I think it's <laughs> one of our favorite action. <laughs> it's <laughs> lying down is also action, right? Yeah. <laughs> so any other? Leads. Yes. Great. Come on, let's use the chat box also. Okay, others? Guides. Yes, guides also. Flock. Mm, correct. Peer. Mm. Comfort, prepare, right? Anoint, follow, dwell. All those things can be verb, right? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing. Uh, is there any time reference over here? Sister Akib, can you answer this question? Did you see any reference of time here? Brother Johnson, what about you? I think Grace will know. Yes? Okay. Uh, in the last verse, I think forever. Forever is a time reference, right? So I think we can uh, see that. And um, what, what is the central idea? What is the theme? You know, there is uh, six verses over here. If you're supposed, if you're going to make a banner or something like that, or, a, you know, what will you write?
there's no wrong answer over here. You can just try. What will be what will be the main thing over here? Is it about the wrath of God, the vengeance of God, or what is it about? I think according to my understanding, the whole verse is like uh, God is our protector, like protects us from everything. Yes, wonderful, sister. So beautiful. Yes. So God is our protector. Oh, beautiful. It's going to be so nice in the banner. Anyone else? Would you like to try? What, uh, what can be the central idea? What speaks to you most over here? Okay, I think a lot of things can come, right? Uh, the Lord, our protect, protector, provider, right? So uh, many things can come. Any contrasting idea, anything which, uh, you know, uh, opposite, is there any opposite words which is mentioned over here or some any contrasting idea? In verse 4, we can see that uh, you're walking through the valley of shadow of death. So if you're going to walk in any valley, I think, what will you do? Obviously, fear will come, right? So, but over here, it says, that I will not fear. I will fear no evil, right? And in front of enemies, oh, oh, uh, you know, what do you want? Uh barricade uh cannonball right ak-47 and other things right but over here there's going to be a table so that's quite contrasting i think we can see here yeah so let's go to the next interpretation okay well let's go verse by verse verse number one the lord is my shepherd shepherd i shall not want from this what does the lord means mention any other names of the Lord, of God, which has been given? What does the Lord mean? Can you give any kind of a synonym instead of Lord? What can you write instead of Lord? Almighty. Yes. Almighty. Very good. Very good synonym. Yes. Sister Heavenly Winnie. Father. Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Father. Oh, Brother Johnson, thank you. Yes, Heavenly Father. Yes. Creator. Creator. Yes, very good. And what else can we see? Jesus. Jesus, yes, very good. Yes, when we say Lord, uh, just try to think in a secular way, Lord. Uh, you know, it is some someone, is it someone inferior or superior? It's obviously superior, right? Of supreme also, it seems to be of most supreme. We don't call our principal Lord, right? <laughs> we call him Sir or something like that, right? Even the chief minister, so we don't say Lord or anything. Yeah. Uh, this term is used, uh, uh, if there's any one of you who is interested in literature, I think uh, you will see the use of it in uh, those uh, English books. But over here, I think uh, it's a, a very respectable post. It's a very, like, you know, a very high post, uh, and uh, it seems to be very powerful, right? So over here, we can see that the Lord is my shepherd. So it's with a capital L. It's not just any other king or anything, but it is uh, the Lord, right? So 
in the Bible also, I think this is not only the first time that it is mentioned about Jesus as a shepherd. Uh, can you recollect any Bible verse where Jesus is mentioned or referred to as a, a shepherd? Yes, I think I uh, this uh, in uh, the New Testament we see that Jesus Himself He called Himself uh, as the Good Shepherd, right? Yes, He is the real Shepherd, and that uh, He He takes care of His sheep and He knows His sheep and the sheep also knows Him. Okay, so all those references are there in the New Testament. And uh, can anyone tell the relationship between a sheep and a shepherd? Sister Grace, can you try? A shepherd is a person who take care of the sheep. Ah, uh, yes, very good. Yes, when you say take care, what does it? What does it mean? Protect from any uh, harm yes very good animals you know mm, 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 mm. which might harm the sheep yes yes he, he gives them a protection right yes and then uh, he gives food right and one amazing thing uh you know what they say about uh the shepherds is that they would name their sheep also and they would call them by names just like we name our dogs and cats okay so they would name them and the sheep also they will know their names and whenever they're called they would come and rush okay so uh that's the the beauty of the relationship now can you paraphrase or give one word that describe the line i shall not want can you just think of any one word for this i shall not want or you can just write in any other sentence also. Is there anything? <clears throat> Sister Rini, would you like to give a try? I shall not want. Can you put in other sentence or maybe a single word? Um, I will always want. <laughs> I will always want. Yeah. <laughs> very good try. Very good. Is there anyone more? Any other who would like to share more? I I lack like nothing. I lack nothing. Okay. Very good. No deficit. No deficit. Oh, very good. Thank you, sister. I think Brother Mark can come out with a very nice word. <laughs> yeah, let's try. <clears throat> Want here is a little bit of an old English usage, uh, old in the sense of the period the old English literature, but this is the way they use it. It means lacking. I shall not lack. I have what I need. I have things in abundance, and uh, so I I do. I'm not dispossessed of anything that I need. I have things that I need. I will not crave for any other thing. So I have things I need. <laughs> I think uh, so. It's self-sufficient. It's sufficient, or it's abundant. Yes want uh, we don't use that in, in that style anymore of english but uh, that's how they use it in the olden time thank you brother thank you so much uh so just this verse one also it's so beautiful right 
the supreme powerful respectable the who the one who is in authority is my shepherd when i say he is my shepherd he takes care of me he feeds me he protects me uh, he knows my name and uh and i have a relationship with that uh, almighty you know uh supreme one and since the lord since that powerful one is my shepherd i i don't lack anything i have in abundance i don't need anything more there is nothing deficit in my life there i am content I, I don't desire anything anymore, right? It's so, it's isn't it beautiful? Just the first verse. And try to remember the author who is saying King David, right? He was a young shepherd. So he so knows what this means. Okay, so let's go to the next. Yes, yes, please. Can I just jump in one more? Uh... This can be interpreted materially also. Uh, it looks very tempting to be translated materially interpreted because we feel that uh, if we have degrees, if we have jobs, if we have uh, riches and wealth and you know good and dainty life, if we live sort of like the American dream, you know, we may think and if we are as rich as uh, Mukesh Ambani, <laughs> so on and so forth, right? Uh, uh, many prosperity gospel preachers would interpret it that way, but here I shall not want. Despite having all these riches and fame and fortune, look at the superstars and the pop stars and the people we idolize. You know, they are rich, they have everything they need, but they lack something deep within. That is the vacuum in their heart that cannot be filled up. And that's exactly where what he says the Lord will provide everything, everything we need materially also, according to his wishes for us, his will. But more than that, the object of our affection and all our emptiness, everything, he is the object of our affection now. And he is all we need. And once we have Christ, we have everything. We all are one. All our neediness all our needs, everything is taken care of. So he is what gives us, what quenches our thirst in our soul. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes, that's very insightful. See, if this, uh, uh, I think we used to get it very wrong. Suppose this is an examination, examination question dash i shall not want fill up fill in the blanks okay dash i shall not want so what you're going to fill up there according to this verse it is the lord is my shepherd but according to me what i am going what will i fill up if it's in my own words uh if i know if i could if i have a good connection with the politician i shall not want or if I get a good job, I shall not want. Or if that is my boyfriend or my girlfriend, I shall not want. Uh, is that the thing that we think that, oh, that will suffice, that will, you know, uh, I'll be satisfied with that. It's, uh, I think from this uh, passage, from this first line itself, I think there are so many uh, questions uh, that are answered in our lives, okay? So when our, when our life, uh, if our life to be, if we want our life to be content, I think this is this one verse. If we study so well, I think uh, we will get so many answers. When the Lord is our shepherd, we will lack nothing. So beautiful. Now, let's go to the next. Number two, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside still water. Is there any reference of Jesus as food or water in the New Testament? How should we search food and water for our lives? So, have you ever heard of Jesus being referred to any type of food? Uh, 
uh, when when the time was nearing, uh, they had the last supper, and Jesus referred himself as "I am the." The bread was referred to as his flesh, and yeah. his blood was referred to as uh, the wine was referred to his uh -huh. blood. Oh, beautiful! Thank you so much, sister. Any more? Yes, uh, in the New Testament, we see that uh, he calls himself the bread of life. So, right? And uh, also, he, he said he promises to give living water. The one who, uh, who, who promises to give living water, which will, uh, you know, well up from within. I think we did this Bible study in the, the group also. Yes. In the chat box, we see that in John 6, 35, yes, we can see the reference over there. Okay. Then, uh, how should we search food or water for our lives? Yeah. According to this verse. Yes, according to this verse, if we are being led by Christ, who is our shepherd, he is the one who is going to lead us to green pastures and water which are the most essential things for our life, right? So if we uh, uh, if we follow his leadership, okay, if we let him lead our life, so where will he take us? To green pastures and still waters. Okay, so we, ne we need to let him lead uh, the way uh, because he is the shepherd. Okay, so is there anyone who would like to share from this yeah, verse, verse 2? Yes, if no one, let's proceed, okay? Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me to the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What or who needs restoration? What is the process of restoration? Any reference of Jesus as way in the New Testament? What do you mean by righteousness? Are we self-righteous or God-righteous? So is there any one of you who has a like, bike or a scooty? Vermin, do you have yes. a scooty? Yes, sister. It's me, Demo. Demo, you have? Yeah, I have one over here. Oh, great, great. So, uh, like, you know... um. There's a TV serial, series which I used to watch in the Discovery Channel. Hmm. All right. Uh, so when we say, Brother Demo, can you just, uh, you know, uh, what do they do when they restore things? Uh, sister, I... Uh... Excuse me, uh, I think it's because of the connection. I miss out some of your words. I didn't get the question. Okay. Uh, can you please tell me if you want to rest, uh, restore uh, like an old bike? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, uh, what, 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 what is the usual process of that? Uh, they went to the workshop. Yeah. And, and in the workshop, what do they do? Uh, they change uh, the old parts with a new one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, while changing, uh, what what is the process of changing? Like, with what uh, will they change? Uh, with uh, some materials, they uh, they will open it up and then they will change it. Oh, with a new one, which yeah. has been provided by the company. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you so much for the demo. You, mm. you answered uh, so well. Yes, I think we can get a picture of that, right? So you go to the workshop, uh, the mechanic will take out his wrench and his screws, right? And then with a big force unscrewing and taking out. And um, if cleaning is necessary, they would clean, right? They would take out the bad part and they will, uh, you know, they would give the new one again. So again, uh, it's a it's it's a long process, right? So, you know, 
uh, who needs restoration? I think I need restoration because there are so many parts of me which is not functioning, okay? <laughs> Physically also and spiritually, oh my, I need so much of restoration because uh, my prayer life is so dull, right? And uh, so many other things. So uh, who can restore? I need to go to the right mechanic who will be able to know which part is not functioning if I need an oil change or do I need a part change or, you know, it just needs cleaning, okay? That restoration part may not be a, 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 a very comfortable one because I have to unscrew, I have to change, I have to, you know, take out the bad parts, keep in the good one again. So uh, this may not be the best illustration, but by using this verb, restore, I guess um, that's how I understand if I am interpreting it wrong, may the Lord forgive me. But I think uh, the, the Lord, the shepherd, he is the one who knows uh, which part of me needs to be repaired or restored, you know, because I'm so proud. I, I, I He needs to take away my pride. So for that, he would crush my ego, right? So, so many things that, that needs to be done. The process is not a very pretty one, but yes, that restores my soul. Okay, uh, Jesus is being mentioned as the way. Do you remember? Jesus himself says that I am the way, the life, right? The truth. So he is the way which is being mentioned in the New Testament. What do you mean by righteousness? Sister Salome, can I just ask? Is meant by righteousness. Uh, brother, can you please answer? Yeah. I want to come back to your question of restoration. This is a very interesting study, right? So the word restoration, when interpret that, you know, we're broken and all that, that's very true. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Brother, your, your voice is very low. Your voice is very low. Can you hear me now, brother? Very better, much better now. Yes. All right. Uh, so, thing is, um, when we talk about restoration, one thing uh, I want to point out very clearly also is that you know the pain, the anguish, the hard, you know, heartbreak that we have faced, and uh, all the the problems that are plaguing us psychologically, even. And the crisis that we are facing, this is something that Christ restores in a believer. A believer is somebody who is happy, who is blessed, who is uh, full of joy, despite the outward circumstances not fav favorable. So this is a restoration is uh, what God wants us. We have a, a living fellowship, and that's why a believer is always somebody who whose brokenness has been restored in completion in Christ. So he's a his heart, his pain, all his life experiences and his troubles and his anxieties, these are taken away and God restores him. So he's a happy man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the righteousness question. The next question: What do you mean by righteousness? Yeah, I, it's a righteousness is a biblical term, very biblical term. It means uprightness. It means goodness of character. It means so uh, free of blemish, free of corruption, and um, righteous as opposed to wrong, and you know, keeping to the road that is acceptable, that is just, that is right, and that is free of sin, 
and sin cannot stain it. I think those are the few concepts that when we talk about uh, righteousness, the, the term can encapsulate these these things. They, they, they walk justly according to uh, the laws of God and God guides them, gives them strength to do that, to, to be able to walk, to keep to that, to be very focused, not sidetracked. Thank you so much, Father Mark. Yes. So I think we can go to the next one. It's very clear. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the dead, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Can you give any kind of example of valley of death? What is the purpose of rod and staff? How will it bring about comfort in our lives? You know, I I work in a hospital, so I often experience uh, this. Uh, yeah, not I. I see many uh, uh, people who are dying, and sometimes we re try to revive, but often we fail. Sometimes uh, we do succeed, but then yes, uh, the life after that is. Uh, you know, it needs intensive care. You have to be in the ICU and all. So there are many things uh, in this. Uh, when the, the coldness of death, it comes uh, to grab you. It's a very terrible scene to see. And uh, the, the hopelessness and the fear that is uh, in some people, uh, you know, it's really sad to see that. And... One thing which is, you know, very clear of human is that one day all of us were going to face this. It's inevitable. It's, I know one lives forever. Someone whom we think is so important in our life or so important in the church or society, uh, just by thinking, oh, like now also I'm thinking if Brother Philip and Sister Salome are not here, what will happen? You know, what will happen to our ministry? Uh, I think uh, it will just die down or something like that, you know. But one thing which is very sure of everyone is that we are going to die. Everyone is replaceable. Uh, no one lives forever. Okay. But uh, I think this uh, verse is so, uh, you know, this if any one of you have experienced death in your family, I think you may have a better understanding of this verse. And at that time also, uh, the, the, the author is saying that I will fear no evil. Because why? Why will I fear no evil? His rod and his staff, they will comfort me. You know, what? what is a rod? What is a staff? What is the purpose of that? A rod is something, you know, like uh, like a club. Okay, something which, uh, you know, it's uh, relatively short and heavy, like a club. And a staff is longer and thinner, and there's a hook at one end. Okay, so uh, uh, this rod is, uh, these two rod and staffs are being uh, carried by shepherds. And whenever they, uh, whenever there's a wild animal or beast trying to attack the, the flock, they would grab their rod and they would like hit those wild animals, okay, so that uh, in order to protect uh, the, the, the flocks. And this staff, as we can see, it is long and there's a hook. Uh, you know, this, this, this sheeps, uh, the funny thing about sheeps are that, you know, they are often called as the most defenseless animal in the, uh, you know, in, on earth. Uh, they don't have any defense mechanism, okay. And uh, and they are quite what I'll say, stupid something. <laughs> they need guidance, okay. And uh, and they're very short sighted. They would just like you know search food, and they won't even know that there is a like a trench. They would just fall down. And since you know they don't have any claws or anything to climb up again, they would stuck there. And you know they it, it, it's something like that. So the the shepherds they really know that uh, uh, the character of this shepherd so the sheep so they would bring their staffs and whenever the the you know the sheep fall down they would 
take their long stuff and with that stuff they would go and grab them by the neck or something and they would like pick them up again to whenever they fall down so something like this <laughs> so the rod is for repelling uh the any kind of you know uh, wild bees and uh, the staff is whenever the sheep falls down they would like bring them back up again okay so i hope this picture stays in your mind uh and see how it just by thinking of rot and staff it doesn't it doesn't seem as so comfortable when you say comfort the word comfort is associated with bed right good food and what not right uh but then you know uh, these are the actual things that we require, a rod and a staff, a rod uh, uh, in the hands of the right shepherd. He is going to protect us uh, from all kinds of evil. And whenever we fall down, he knows our weakness. We He knows that we are so defenseless. We don't know how to get up on ourselves, by ourselves. So his staff will always pick us up again. So this is a, a very wonderful uh, a thing. So is there anyone who would like to share more on this uh, uh, particular verse? Okay, so let's go to the next one. Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. What does the Bible teach us about being enemy of God or uh, who gets anointment of oil? Okay, so uh, the, I think we I'll just answer this because uh, this is something uh, uh, related with the culture. Um, you know, preparing a table is like uh, preparing dinner. Okay, uh, it's, uh, it's synonymous as that. So over here, uh, the Psalms uh, describe that uh, uh, you know the faithful person. This uh, she the. the that faithful person as the uh, God's guests at the meal and the enemies are powerless to prevent the uh, enjoyment of God's gorgeous, generous hospitality. So uh, we can see that the it means that the enemies, our enemies will be able to uh, see that we are enjoying in the presence of uh, of God because he is the one who prepared uh, uh, that table, who prepared that food for us you know he is uh, uh, we are god's guests so in their culture what do they do is that whenever they uh, have a guest of which whom they admire a lot you know they would anoint their head with perfume with uh, good oil okay so whenever they go to, if you go to a jewish uh, home and if they think that uh, you know uh, they're very close to you or they want to honor you uh, because you are present uh, you know they would uh, anoint their head with oil so uh, this means that like we are god's guests uh, he he and you know like uh, we are in his sanctuary okay so uh, even our enemies are going to see that so you know this uh, i think uh, we can just proceed on with with that now, verse six, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, see, it's a very, very wonderful promise, right? Surely, it's surely is so sure. <laughs> it's uh, what else can come in between? You know, surely means it is going to come back 100%. You know, it's uh, it's going to happen. Uh, you know what what is going to happen? Goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, they are going to follow me all the days of my life. This is because this is what I need: goodness and mercy. Uh, it's not uh, uh, because I am a sinner. I always need uh, mercy. I always need forgiveness. Okay, so uh, the the goodness of God, even though, even though I don't deserve the things that I am blessed with right now, because of the goodness of God, uh, I am being blessed with so many things. So it's such a, a beautiful promise to see that 
this goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life and this nothing can change and this is like you know foolproof it's like it's uh it's not like you know some politician saying that I, I will do this and this and that but never happens it's not like that so this is going to surely happen and the wonderful thing about this is that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, it's not only about the 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 things that is going to happen on earth, but I will go to heaven because the Lord saves me. You know, we often ask, are you sure of your salvation? Are you sure that you will go uh, to heaven when you die? I can say confidently, yes. Why? Because as long as the Lord is my shepherd, I'm going, goodness and mercy is going to follow me. As long as Jesus is my shepherd, I am going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever means still eternity. Where does forever takes place? It takes place in heaven only, right? So um, this is a very beautiful uh, promise and assurance from the Lord that even here on earth and on afterlife, that uh, for those, uh, you know, for his sheep there's nothing to worry about so uh i think that is uh we can just uh, finish with the interpretation uh, of all the verses uh, so before we go to the um, application is there anyone who would like to uh, say more on this okay so we'll uh, uh, proceed on application what does this best how what does this passage show about god's character and uh, purpose what is or are the things that comfort us in our times of trouble how how can i react how how do i react to troubles in my life after learning uh, this passage do you have a shepherd is he your lord so those are the questions that I just uh, put for application. Um, I think there are some personal things. I I hope uh, you are blessed some way. And uh, if there's anyone who would like to share, we may continue to share. Uh, if, and uh, just one thing I would like to conclude is that, you know, as we have learned about uh, the Lord being our shepherd, I hope that each and everyone present over here, we can confidently say that, yes, I have a shepherd and his name is Jesus. He is my Lord. You know, as my personal Lord and Savior, I have accepted Christ. So I wish we all, all of us, we uh, can say that conf confidently. So I would conclude our Bible study with this and uh, I, I will give back our time to the host. So for any kind of discussion or share, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Sister Tan Pui. I think we're all blessed, right? Those questions at the end, I think uh, if you can share it one more time, Sister, we can give a a little bit of take a screenshot of this and maybe you can ponder upon this tonight or the, the coming days we can continue to share our thoughts our views and our testimonies all right the last slide i mean the application questions that are, those are also very crucial what what do you learn about god's character dear brothers and sisters tonight from what we study we know we have a living god who is the master of everything creator of the universe he cares for his people. What a comforting, what an assurance, right, that the Lord is teaching us. And then uh, one thing, in, in verse 5, it says, you prepare a table before me in presence of mine enemies. I think that really strikes so well with me uh, because in the table, you know, those who are partaking of the Lord Jesus Christ and his supper, they are blessed and they have boldness. They have the Holy Spirit living and the world looks on them, they wonder what's happening to these people. They have no fear of COVID. They have no fear of anything, no failure, right? They are joyful and they are protected. And, uh, 
the favor of the Lord is upon those who are oh, those who are the those that are the sheep of the true shepherd, right? And in times of troubles also. So they can they don't have to tread on troubled waters all the time because God is with them all the time. And I think all of us tonight, it behooves all of us to think about who God is. Now we know the character of God. How do I act in times of my trouble after learning that what the Lord has done? This is true. It should be true of a true Christian, of a redeemed person. And in times of our deepest, darkest, diff most difficult times, when the world, the same thing faced by the worldly people, they are shaken, they are devastated they're crying bitterly and they they lost hope in everything but for christians but those whose sheep is the lord jesus uh, whose shepherd is the lord jesus christ but what a comforting bible passage right well i believe jesus christ is your shepherd he's the personal shepherd if not i i ask you i request you to make him the lord and savior of your life, follow him, obey him. If he is your shepherd, I can guarantee you will not regret your life here on earth. You have life of victory over and over again and again every day. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear sister, and I hope you're all blessed. Well, time is running on a little bit, so I think we can close. And if you are blessed or if you want to share something more, we'll continue to use the chat box also in our WhatsApp group. Okay, thank you so much. To end our um, our session tonight, uh, can I request Sister Salome if she's still here? Uh, maybe uh, Sister Salome, you're still here. Well, if not, oh, uh, she is in the room. All right, no problem. Then we'll request Brother Philip to end this Bible study with a prayer. After which, we'll turn on our videos momentarily, a few seconds, and I'll take a, a screenshot of this, and we'll say goodbye. Okay? Good night. Yes, Brother Philip, please, would you please close with a prayer? All right. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for this wonderful evening. You have blessed us, oh Lord. We want to thank you and uh, uh, bringing, oh Lord, uh, Sister Kip Demo and Grace Johnson and Limay and Loino, Rini, Rinzwani and Lord Vermin, Jorini, we want to thank you and praise you. Lord, they have the hungry heart. They want to grow and that's how you have brought them in. Uh, and I'm sure there are some uh, joining uh, in uh, together, oh Lord, in the rooms. And may you bless each one of them. And I want to thank you and praise you, Lord. Um, the camp success will uh, will not be uh, will not give much impact without the follow up. And that way, oh Lord, Brother Mark and Sister Pui, despite their busy schedule, despite their health challenges, Lord, they put conscious effort, volunteering themselves to uh, lead or uh, take the Bible study, Lord, uh, which is so enlightening, so enriching. We want to thank you and praise you. May you continue to bless Brother Mark and Sister Pui, and may you continue to use them oh, all the more than many students' life, young graduates or graduates' life, Lord, will be transformed and impacted and bring a uh, uh, blessing to the churches, oh Lord. Father, we want to thank you once again for their lives. And also, Lord, uh, your word has come to us so clearly, oh Lord. May you help each one of us to consider you to be a good shepherd. Oh, we will lack nothing. We don't need anything when, as long as 
we consider you to be our good shepherd. You will guide, you will lead, you will uh, <clears throat> prepare, you will, uh, you will uh, renew us and you will guide us and you will uh, protect us. Nothing to be afraid, nothing to be scared. Lord, you help us that we will always keep you to be our good shepherd and that way all the promises that you have uh, given to us will be fulfilled. Lord, once again, may you bless each one of them uh, that they will be able to bring life, O oh Lord, to the fellowship there in the campus and they will all be uh, will continue to uh, discipline themselves and stick to their commitments they had made in the camp. Lord, may you keep fully under, keep each one of them under your care and control. Thank you so much once again for hearing our prayers. We give all the glory and honor uh, to you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Would you please turn on your videos? Let's let's take a snapshot. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Sister Demo, Sister Zorini, uh, Brother Demo, Brother Johnson, Sister Lime. Yes, Sister Akip. All right. Are we ready? Let's smile. Oh, just all right. Here we go. One, two, smile. We've got Pony also. One little kid. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Good night, everyone. We'll be again next week. All right. <laughs> yes, let's continue this Bible study, okay? In other days. Yeah. You guys yes. are always in our prayers. God will make you stronger every day. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. It's the same in terms of. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Oh, thank you so much.